Uh, what a special evening, and thank you, Lori, for putting together this night, and thank you to all the leaders being honored tonight. It's so inspiring. I want to take you back for a moment to life before the pandemic, to January 2020. I was in Davos, Switzerland, at the World Economic Forum, in a big conference room with about 80 CEOs, and it was a meeting of the CEO Council that Brian Moynihan chairs. And we were wrapping up an invigorating discussion about a new reporting framework for ESG. It was a framework that Brian had pioneered with the support of the big four accounting firms. And in what is typical Brian style, as we wrapped the discussion, he paused. And he looked around the room and he said, the framework's ready. It's not perfect, it never will be, but it's good enough. The only thing left to do is for each of us to commit to use it. And if we do, it's pretty simple. The world will be a better place. Today, 114 of the world's leading companies have voluntarily committed to a single framework across industry. And I'm super proud, Brian, that we're reporting in December for the first time. This is an example of Brian's inspiring and super effective leadership and his consistent belief that as companies, we have a role and a responsibility to contribute. In fact, in Brian's very first letter to shareholders in 2010, yes, it has been that long, Brian wrote, and I quote, Bank of America is built to meet the financial needs of people, businesses, and institutional investors to attract the best employees to serve our customers and clients to support the communities where we work and to create long-term shareholder value. Brian has been practicing stakeholder capitalism before it had a name. And he did so by relentlessly pursuing responsible business growth. And that meant when the pandemic hit, Brian and his leadership team were not only able to make sure that their frontline workers were there in the communities, serving the people and keeping them safe. And that B of A would thrive and emerge stronger. But in 2020, they substantially increased their corporate philanthropy to $350 million. They announced a $1 billion four-year commitment to further racial equality and economic opportunity through jobs, housing, uh, businesses and healthcare. And they invested nearly $6 billion in our communities. Brian's list of contributions are really long. And as someone who's only been global CEO for two years, pretty awe inspiring. But the list is both private, both public and private. See, I met Brian in 2015 for the first time. I'd just become CEO of our North America business for Accenture, and I was at the business roundtable for my very first meeting, and I knew no one. At a break, Brian came up and, with no fanfare, put his hand out and said, I'm Brian Moynihan. He said, when I became CEO, I had a lot of help. And so if I can ever do anything for you, give me a call. And I did. And I so appreciate and I'm grateful for the advice and the mentorship, something no one would ever know. And that's Brian. The world's a better place because of Brian's generosity, because of how much he cares, and because he inspires each of us by the way he does things without fanfare, never about Brian or even about B of A. He inspires us all to work together to make the place, the world a better place. And so tonight, and I am so extremely honored to introduce you, to thank you, to recognize you, my teacher, 
my friend, and most of all, my inspiration. Thank you, Brian.